times have I turned away the number is the same as the sands on the shore and every time you've taken me back now I pray you do it once more please take from me my life when I don't have the strength to give it away to you. Please take from me my life when I don't have the strength to give it away to you, Jesus. How many times have I gone astray? The number is the same as the stars in the sky. And every time you've taken me back, now I pray you do it tonight. Please take from me my life. I don't have the strength to give it away to you. Please take from me my life when I don't have the strength to give it away to you, Jesus. Please take from me my life when I don't have the strength Give it away to you. Please take from me my life when I don't have the strength to give it away to you, Jesus. To give it away to you. Morning, Hope Church second service. Good you guys are almost as good as first service. Not quite. Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. All right. You know, it's kind of cool seeing Will up here, but I really think that Gina should be playing the drums if Will's going to be singing. Um, I don't know if all of you know or not, if you don't, if you're new to the church or you're visiting, we have a Facebook page under Hope Christian, and the gentleman in the back there is working the... Uh, speakers and stuff there sean is the one that operates that so if if you ever want to look what's going on in facebook for the church and stuff gives a lot of information every sermon that has been done since facebook started is on that so you can always go back and refer it to let's just say here's something you you like and you want to tell someone else about it all you have to do is go to the facebook and you can see it or if you're locked in at home or something like that and you want to watch this live you can see it as it occurs in the morning on the same place um, in December this year um, December and January we uh, distributed uh, I like to say distributed rather than sold to you uh, 125 one-year Bibles you remember that oh yeah and when it started out I know how it goes everybody was very enthusiastic about it and was reading them every day and it's a reality that it's everybody doesn't have another 30 or 40 minutes to read a Bible every single morning. And so people fell behind. I know I've fallen behind. All I can say is this. It's the Bible. It's not a book like Contiki or something that starts somewhere and ends somewhere. It's a Bible. It's ongoing. It's a living book. So what I would like you to do is we're halfway through the year right now. Just take the Bible if you have one, the one-year Bible, and dust it off, pull it out, and just pick it up from today where we are today start reading it today and then if you fall behind it's okay it's not a terminal bad thing the plan is that the Wednesday night men's study here which is here at 6:30, which I encourage you to come to um, 
we'll have uh, will continuously be going over that one year Bible. So what you read in a week, if it's confusing or you want to talk about it, uh, just show up on Wednesday night at six thirty here in the church and. You know, the Bible studies are really good. They stick to an hour almost exactly, so you're not going to be committed for the whole night. And Harlow usually shows up and brings uh, Oreo cookies. And when Lee comes, he brings chocolate chip homemade cookies, which are also very nice things. But we have a lot of people in that study that know the Bible well enough that they answer some of the questions, because there's certainly a lot of us that can't answer all those questions. Um, and today is a very special day in my mind. Um, and it's extremely important as far as being uh, new Christians and stuff like that, and that is a baptism. And we're going to have a baptism. So if you would, just stay seated and uh, watch the baptism. It's going to be cool. We realize God works in all kinds of places, but our goal here at Hope is just simply to be followers of Jesus. We're not the, the only Christians, but we're Christians only, and, uh, and we just want to follow him. So he said before he ascended uh, back to heaven, after he rose from the grave, he said, um, go make disciples of all nations. I know you know this verse, and he said um, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and I am with you always to the very end of the age. And that started 2,000 years ago. The church started in Jerusalem. It mushroomed, and it grew rapidly, and everyone that you read about in the New Testament, they were baptized, just as Jesus had said, when you read the account in Acts of the church uh, when the church began. So we follow that pattern. We want to, we don't apologize. We want to be followers of Jesus. Even Jesus was baptized and he he never sinned, you know, so you're following his example. So I want to ask you a couple questions. Let's go ahead. I want to ask you, first of all, do you believe with all your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, that he's the son of God and rose from the grave? I believe that Jesus Christ is God the Son, and He's my Lord and Savior. And I believe in His death, burial, and resurrection, that He died for my sin. You kind of covered uh, the whole confession there. <laughs> Paul said that uh, every day, every, every tongue one day will confess that Jesus is Lord. And you just said that. You want to say that again at your Jesus baptism? Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. Because of your faith in Christ and your willingness to follow Him as the Lord of your life, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for forgiveness of all your sins and the, re- the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen! Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Lord, thank you. Amen. Hey, take some time to greet one another.
was a preacher. She was his wife. Just trying to make the world a little better, you know. Shine a light. People started talking just to hear their own voice. Those people tried to accuse my father, said they made, made the wrong choice. And though it might be painful, time will always tell. Those people have long since gone. My, my father, father never, never failed. Even when the rain falls, even when the flood starts rising, even when the storm comes, I am washed by the water. Even when the rain falls, even when the flood starts rising, even when the storm comes, I am washed by the water. Even when the earth crumbles under my feet Even when the ones I love Turn around and crucify me I won't ever, ever let you down I won't fall, I won't fall I won't fall as long as you're around me even when the rain falls, even when the flood starts rising, even when the storm comes, I am washed by the water. Even when the rain falls, even when the flood starts rising, even when the storm comes, I am washed by the water. Even when the rain even falls, the rain oh, oh, oh. even when the flood starts rising, even when the storm even comes, when the storm comes I, I am washed by the water. Even when the rain even falls, when the rain oh, oh, oh. even when the flood starts rising, even when the storm even comes, even when the storm comes, I, I am washed by the water. Even when the rain falls, even when the flood starts rising, even when the storm comes, I am washed by the water. Why are you striving? These days, why are you trying to earn grace? Why are you crying? Let me lift up your face. Just don't turn away. Why are you looking for love? Are you still searching as if I'm not enough? So where will you go, child? Tell me where will you run? To where will you run? Cause I'll be by your side whenever you fall in the dead of night. Whenever you call and please don't fight these hands that are holding you. And my hands are holding you Look at these hands On my side They swallow the grave On that night When I drank the world sin So I could carry you in Give you life. I wanna give you life. Cause I'll be by your side whenever you fall in the dark of night. Whenever you call and please don't fight these hands that are holding you. 
and mine's a hole. can all face many challenges. Sometimes things don't go well or we make mistakes and sometimes we are tempted 
to let the past bring us down, or we are tempted to worry about the uncertainty of our future. But on Sunday, we stop everything, and we gather around the cross. God loves us so much, and he wanted to be with us so much that he sent his son to die on a cross for our sins. Regardless of our past or what challenges that we face this week, God is with us. And because of the cross, we are born again.
after searching all these years And the man that I saw He wasn't at all who I thought he'd be I was lost when you found me here And I was broken beyond repair then you came along and you sang your song over me Feels like I'm born again Feels like I'm living For the very first time For the very first time in I have a feeling in my soul And I pray that I'm not wrong That the life I have now It is only the beginning Feels like I'm born again Feels like I'm living For the very first time for the very first time Feels like I'm breathing Feels like I'm moving For the very first time For the very first time I was looking for Something that was more than what I had yesterday Then you came to me And you gave to me life and love And I've never known And I've never felt before Feels like I'm born again Feels like I'm living for the very first time For the very first time For the very first time Feels like I'm breathing Feels like I'm moving For the very first time I'm living for the first time In my David got on to the water, then got a sling, then he put a rock in there, and Goliath laughed. Then David said, I'm not afraid of Goliath. Then, then he got his sling, um, um, sling him at Goliath's forehead, then he made him fall over. Amen. Well, we welcome you, and we're glad that you're here. We had great service in the first one. We also want to thank you if you're watching online and joining us, and appreciate you uh, being a part of our service. We're in a series right now called Like a Child, and um, we, last week we did part one. What we're doing is looking at different attributes about God 
and looking at them as, uh, from the child's perspective. We, we, we have a theme verse that we've based this whole series on. It's on your outline if you're a note taker and if you got a bulletin on the back of the bulletin, we have the verse there and it tells about a time when um, people were bringing their children to Jesus. Um, uh, perhaps for him to pray for them or to touch them, to bless them somehow. And the disciples are like, oh, no, 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 no. We got to, Jesus is too important for this. We got to get these kids out of here. Kind of like what happens sometimes now where we always want to get the kids out of the way. Wasn't it cool, by the way, to have the kids in here with us this morning? Yeah, we, we do that on the third Sunday and Ava gets a break. Ava has been leading our children's worship, which is going awesome over there. But um, they're like, get these kids out of the way. And then Jesus, it says in Mark's gospel, he's, Jesus became indignant. So it's a strong word. He's ticked off. And he says, no, let the little children come to me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And, in fact, he makes this chilling statement that I think we kind of gloss over sometimes. He said, unless you become like what? Look on your outline. Like a little child, it says in Mark 10, 15 you will never enter it. So that's important. That's an important uh, um, verse that we need to, to pay attention to. I don't think he's saying that we need to become childish, obviously, but that we need to have a childlike innocence, belief, and trust in God and in the kingdom to let it into our life. And we can learn a lot from kids. And so last week we looked at the fact that God is for you. And we looked at passage after passage that talks about how God is for you. If God is for you, who can effectively be against you? Who can stop you? And so then we looked at, well, if God is for me then and for you, that means that fact should radically transform how we live. And we talked about three things about how if God is for me, I don't have to hide from God, but run to God. You know, when we sin and do things wrong, we can be tempted to think we need to hide like Adam did in the garden. But God knew where he was, and he, he, he wants us to run to him, not run from him. And then we looked at because God is for me, I don't have to live for God's approval, but from God's approval. That makes a lot of difference when you live from his approval instead of for it. And we looked at, uh, I, t I told the story about a pastor who in Oklahoma City, uh, Craig, he said that uh, his dad was an incredible baseball player. And then he got pretty good at it too, except he wouldn't do good when his dad showed up. He did really good when his dad wasn't there. And then dad would come and he'd strike out. And his dad figured out that he wasn't doing good when he was there. So he got with him. He said, son, I love you because of who you are, because you're my son, not because of your batting average. And Craig said, like the next game, he's like, you guys better back up, because it changed his whole perspective now that he knew his, God, his dad loved him no matter what. And we are transformed when we realize we're not on this conditional relationship with God where we're trying, Jesus didn't die on the cross so he could earn our way. And then we looked at how I don't fear what happens to me because God is working in me. And that he even takes the junk, that he's able to work all things to the good for those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. If we keep loving God and follow that call for his purpose, God can take even the bad things in our life and do something good out of it. So this week we're looking at another attribute of God. If you were in seminary or in a Bible class, they would call it the omnipresence. And you have to kind of say it in that voice, omnipresence. And it just means that God is everywhere. But we're going to look at it from the, the perspective of a child. A child would not just say God is everywhere and be impersonal. A child would be more personal. A child would say God is with me. God is with me. And we're going to look at that. You know, personal presence makes all the difference to a child. You know, if you leave a child alone in the house and they start hearing the house squeak and stuff, they get so afraid. When a parent's in the room, they calm down. Some of you parents have had kids come in the middle of the night because they had a nightmare. They wanted to be in the presence of their mom or their dad. It makes so much difference when there's the presence of the parents in the place. I have a grandson named Ryder that lived with us here for a while. He and his mom, um, sadly, our, our youngest daughter, Courtney, found out she, was, she had married into an abusive relationship. And uh, so we, we had to deal with uh, um, 
you know, that broke all of our hearts. And, and she, she started working on a career that, that, and she'd already, already got a degree and she's a hard worker and loved her little boy. And, but we got them for a time here before they moved to New York. And some of you had to endure all my grandpa stories. But uh, Ryder and I, we used to drive around and we'd go to these ranches down there uh, in the south part of the town and we would go to the barnyard. He'd say, barnyard. And we'd go to the barnyard and he'd say, horses and, and donkeys. And we'd do the noises. What's a donkey? Hee-haw. And we'd do all those. And uh, then there's horses on the hill. So after he came out of the barnyard, he'd say, hill, hill. So he'd go up to the hill. We see alpaca, sometimes the sheep, and we'd do all the bah and all that stuff. And then we come down the hill and he says, other horses, other horses, because he knew there was another barnyard down this other road. So we would go see the other horses. Then sometimes after we got done with that, he would say, again, again. So it'd start all over, sometimes three times. I'm, I'm going, fall asleep here, fall asleep. But no, it was a lot of fun. But. Uh, <laughs> Then when he moved, it was really tough. It was really tough. And he goes uh, back and forth occasionally for these custody uh, visits. And one of those times, Courtney arranged for me to meet him at San Jose and to fly with him to New York just after he'd moved. And it was so awesome. We had such a great time uh, flying together. We, another interest he has is airplanes. So uh, <laughs> when we got there, we had been apart for a while before this trip. And I noticed when we got there while I was there in New York with him, he just would cling to me. He'd stand there for standing up, a group of guys talking. I'd look down and he'd ha have his hands around my leg, just clinging to me. And uh, this last trip, I got to go see him again and uh, uh, we went swimming. He, he and the, uh, his cousin, uh, Jake, and my other grandson, and we went swimming. And I, my job was um, Ryder. And um, so Ryder and I were out there doing the tugboat thing when the kids get on your back and you're in the water, go, you know. And all of a sudden, I feel him sticking his feet inside my bathing suit. <laughs> and he starts going, huh, huh, I got my feet in your pants. I got my feet in your pants. And I'm like, Ryder, knock it off. And he's squeezing my neck. And he's just dying laughing. I got my feet in your pants. <laughs> so finally, after we had a great visit, enjoyed the fourth, I had to say goodbye to him and tell him we're moving. We're going back home. And he goes like this. He won't look at me. This turns, he's feeling abandoned again. You know, and he doesn't understand. He kept saying, I want to go to Gracie's house. Couldn't understand why he couldn't just go to our house. You know, he doesn't understand the distance and all that. The presence of a parent makes all the difference. You know, a lot of guys think they've got to do all this impressive stuff, like write a book and get all these degrees. And there's nothing wrong. Those are great accomplishments, make money or whatever. But what a kid really wants to know is, are you going to be there? Are you going to be in my life? And uh, when you know God is with you, it makes all the difference. When you internalize that, it makes all the difference in the way you live. And we're going to look at a few points. But first, I just wanted to establish the fact that Scripture teaches God is with me. Look at Isaiah 41.10 on the outline. This is a great verse. So do not fear for what? I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Isaiah 41.10, that's Old Testament. That promises over and over in the Old Testament. You go to the New Testament, here's an example. Hebrews 13.5, never will I leave you. What's it say? Never will I forsake you. I, I like that word, never say never, because you never know, you know what God's going to do. But here's a place that it's, it's used in a good way that you and I need to internalize. Never will I forsake you. God says that. God promises that. When I was uh, a freshman and I went to high school in Taft High, uh, they, they had stories of Freshman Friday when you first started, and we were terrified. You know, it's little coming out of eighth graders going into high school. And, but there was one thing that happened. Um, uh, my big brother was the starting fullback on the football team that would eventually go to Valley playoffs, and everybody knew that. And so these other little freshmen are getting beat up on, but I'm like, I'm walking down the halls, and they're like, that's Ron Freitas' little brother. That's Ron Freitas' little brother. And no one touched me. You know, I'm seeing my buddies rolling down steps in garbage cans. Sorry. You know, <laughs> makes all the difference, right? What if God is with you? If God, the creator of the universe, is with you, it makes all the difference. That's why you and I need to internalize it. You and I need to believe what it said. Some of you don't feel like he's with you. 
And you know what I always say about feelings? You get a feeling from a pizza. You get a feeling from a burrito, you know. Eat that Gordo down there on Clark. It's a, it's a dandy. But it's not about feelings. Love is not based on feelings. It's a choice. And you've got to claim scriptures and claim God's word. And God will work in your life. In the Old Testament, over and over again, I am with you, says the Lord. I am with you. New Testament, Jesus shows up. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. So God is with us. We see how we're supposed to live. We see what God is like. Then he says, after he dies on the cross for our sins, raises from the grave, he says, I'm going to go back to heaven, but I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, and he will be in you. And so God is not only with us now, he's in us, and will lead us and comfort us and teach us. And so God is with us. So that's the point I wanted to make right off. Let's all say it together. God is with me. God is with me. You need to learn to say that over and over in your heart uh, and, and internalize that. So... If God is with me, then how do I make the most of it? How do I get to know him? How do I have a moment with God? You know, there is a passage in James that says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So that proves that even though God is everywhere, that doesn't mean I'm getting real close to him if I'm not doing some things in my life, if I'm not, if I'm not living it, if I'm not living in his presence. So I want to talk about some simple ways on how to have a moment with God since God is with me. Uh, First of all, you talk to him. You talk to him. If you're a blank filler, that's the first blank. Talk to him. I, I, I didn't use the word prayer. I think prayer can be intimidating. I think some people are incredible prayer warriors, and we need that. Amen? I, I got to be honest, though. I'm not one of those people that can pray for long blocks of prayer. Um, I'll try. I'm, I'm going to really pray on this one. I'm going to stay focused, and I'll start praying, and I'll go, Oh, look at that shiny thing, you know, and I get distracted or I nod off or whatever. And I think, I think you got to, you need to make, you keep it simple. Prayer is simply talking to, to God. You can get intimidated by some prayer warriors because they actually have a prayer language. You know, they don't, they'll be talking normal and then it's time to prayer and they're like, our father who art in heaven, you know, they change. You know, could you imagine if they were at the drive through at Taco Bell, I'll take a burrito supreme from thee and uh, <laughs> thou shalt give me some extra hot sauce, you know, <laughs> why God just wants us to talk to him. That's what prayer is. Talk to him. Look what David said. Psalm 54 two. hear my prayer. O God, listen to the words of my mouth. You and I need to just talk to God. And maybe you're like me, rather than doing the long blocks as awesome as that is, and there are prayer warriors, uh, especially in the East, but there are prayer warriors in America too that spend lots of time. Um, I think of it kind of like texting. You know, I talk to my kids across the country and my wife and different people. I'm trying not to do it while I'm driving. Sorry, I'm, I'm repenting of that, but uh, I. I I think prayer is kind of like texting, and you can drive text with God. And uh, so it's kind of like you're going, uh, Father, what do you want me to do about this? Father, thank you for this day. Father, I need your strength right now. Father, uh, what do you want me to say to this person when I go into this meeting? Father, thank you for the opportunity that I get to work here. Father, thank you for that I get to have this person in my life. Father, show me what to do next in this situation. See, you can have this ongoing texting, talking to God and pray for this person or pray for that and have ongoing communication. Well, what do I talk about? Look at Paul says the next verse, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not worry about what? He just kicks my tail. You know, Paul, he doesn't say, don't worry about most things. I wish he would sometimes, you know, some things are optional. He just, don't worry about anything. He's so all-inclusive. He does that all the time in his letters. And uh, he says, don't worry about anything. But instead of worrying, this is, what does he say to do? Pray about what? Everything. Everything. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then, look what, you, look what happens. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. It's uncomprehendable. When you really, when you really offload it on God and you talk to God and, and you do it with thanksgiving, that's what my grandma always said, uh, count your blessings. Sometimes when you start counting your blessings, that problem isn't so big after all. And, uh, but he says, pray about everything. That means, God, help me find that hamster that got away. God, help me in this geometry test or driving test. God, help me to be a blessing to this person. 
Lord, help me in my marriage. I know things could be better, Father. Help me to, to be better. To have, Lord, help me ha- handle or, or this difficult person in my family or this difficult person at work or this difficult person at church. And if you can't think of any difficult person in your life, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you're the difficult person. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I couldn't wait to say that. Just kidding. <laughs> you, you, whatever it is you're struggling with, God's real. God loves you. God is for you, and God is with you, and you can talk to him about anything, and um, he says you receive peace. That's more than you can comprehend when you do that. The next point is listen to him. Not only talking to God, we need to listen to him. You ever have a friend that likes to come up to you and dump a a problem on you, and you think maybe some ideas that might help, and you get ready to tell them, and they go, oh, I got to run, thanks, and they run off, and like, ah, you know, I think God maybe feels that way sometimes if I just whine about some problems, but I don't listen to them. Sometimes us preachers are terrible at listening, and uh, we've got to listen to what God says. Look at Deuteronomy 30, verse 20. Listen to God's voice and hold fast to him, for the Lord, what? is your life. I love that passage that Moses says he's not just one who gives you abundant life, although that's true. Jesus says that in John, but he is our life. And uh, so he says, hold fast to him. And he says, listen to his voice. Well, what does his voice sound like? Is it like Morgan Freeman? You know, (laughs) Charlton Heston, this is the Lord, your God, I saith unto thee, you know, what, what does he sound like? Well, I think he speaks in his word, of course, like Tom was saying, we should be in the Word and trying to, to do the, the daily reading, not on a guilt trip, uh, not by how much we can read, but feeding on God's Word. How many times have you read something, maybe you read it before, and you read it, and you see it in a new light? How many times have you read something, and you go, wow, that was just what I needed? You know, you're struggling with worry, or you're struggling uh, with being patient, or whatever. You read the Word of God, and it helps you. So it's food, and it helps us. Sometimes I'll preach a sermon, and I'll quote something from the Word, and someone will go, man, how did you know? Were you preaching to me? And I say, no, I was preaching to me. If it helped you out, that's cool too, you know? <laughs> because it's so practical, and we can read it all our lives and keep learning new insights. We can see a verse differently as we study it. But I also believe God speaks to us in other ways. I believe God speaks to us through people. People can give us spiritual input and insight, and God can work through us. Some of us have had godly moms or dads, or we've had godly uh, uh, mentors or people in the church or people that have spoken wisdom to us, and and their wisdom was proved to be right. Uh, I think God also speaks to circumstances. You know, I thought for a while that if something looked like it needed to be done, then it was going to work, and I'd work my tail off on a certain thing, but then sometimes it was really, really difficult. I believe, I've learned, I'm learning as an old dude, I'm, if something is really so hard, maybe God's not in it. You know, if the door slams in your face, maybe it isn't God's will. Sometimes through circumstances, you can sense the providential will of God. So I don't know what God's voice sounds like. It may sound like your voice, if you, like when you're reading and you narrate kind of. Maybe that's, maybe it's a prod on the heart. The Bible says the Holy Spirit lives in us and we got to claim what scripture says. I think God will lead you though and he'll lead me if I'll shut my trap and listen. If you're having trouble getting anything from God, I would encourage you to do this. Get a journal and write as you, as you do this. Write down, God, who are the people that I should pray for today? And then if you're still, I bet you some names start coming to mind and you start writing. And then you say, like, uh, what, what are some things I need to pray for these people today? And then do this. Call those people and say, hey, I feel like God put you on my heart. I want you to know I prayed for you. And sometimes they'll say something like, how did you know? And it's a God thing. It's a God deal. And so uh, journal it. That'll help you sometimes, I think, as you, as you learn to listen to God's voice. If you've ever done any kind of TV work or been interviewed, uh, sometimes they do it on radio, they, they give you this little inner ear thing, and uh, they talk to you, right? And they're like, you got 20 seconds, sit up straight, you know? 
Uh, you got milk on your lip. Don't pick your nose. They talk to you and you're trying, okay, okay. You have this internal voice. That's kind of what I'm after here, where God is kind of this microphone in our ear, in our heart, and we're listening to him. Look at this next verse, Isaiah. Whether you turn to the right or the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Sometimes I'm not saying that God won't call you through difficult times. Sometimes he'll call you to something that scares the tar out of you. But the door is open, and it's a God thing. And sometimes I think our, ma- our greatest blessings come when we listen to God and nobody else and we follow his voice. And then we receive. That's the next point. Receive from him. If God is with you and in you, and you're talking to him and you're listening to him, he's got some blessings for you, and you need to learn to receive his blessings. Sometimes adults have a hard time receiving blessings. Some adults are good at giving, they'll volunteer, they want to serve, but they don't want to receive a blessing. Kids aren't that way, you know? You never hear kids go, uh, you know, I've got way too many presents. Let's take some of these back, you know? They're like, this is all mine, you know? And they don't want to share that S word, share, you know? And uh, they know how to receive a blessing. And then we we can kind of get into, well, I don't want anybody to owe me anything. I don't want to take anything. We don't have that childlike faith receiving the blessings from God. A couple, few weeks ago, Nathan's car was parked outside, and I guess it was dirty. And uh, two guys didn't tell him and they washed his car, which I think that is so awesome. We should be doing random things like that all the time. I don't know if he ever found out, and, and I'm not going to say the names, uh, Tom and Ron Watts, uh, Tom <laughs> took it. But anyway, I'll bet you if they said to him, Nathan, can we wash your car? He, he would have said, no, no, because you know, he's a good-hearted guy. That's a blessing to so many. And it's a hard thing sometimes for us to receive. But when you come to God, he wants to bless you. It is his nature. It's, it's part of who he is. God gives. God loves. And so when we go to God and we find in Scripture, in fact, I would encourage you to read through Scripture and say, make a list. What are blessings that come from God? And you'll find things like he gives strength to the weary. You'll find things like he guides the lost. He gives courage to those who are afraid. He gives rest to the weary. Over and over there's these blessings that God wants me to receive if I'll come to them and receive them. Look at 2 Corinthians 1. Praise be to the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. I love that passage because we get this comfort from the God of all comfort. But it really hit me this morning that I needed to go to the last part of that verse. I didn't put it on your outline. It goes on to say, so that. Everybody say, so that. So God gives us this comfort. The God of all comfort gives us comfort so that we can comfort others with the same comfort we ourselves receive. God doesn't want us to be a dead sea. He wants us to be a channel of blessing. So he wants it to pour through us. And that's part of how we're blessed too, isn't it? When we start being a comforter to others, we're blessed in the process. And so something really came on my heart this morning and I was thinking about it. Um, I've been praying for Alan Mitchell and I've been asking you to pray for him. Alan is one of our folks that came. It's, uh, Alan Jill came in... Uh, I think it was around December. They're neighbors of Dasu and Lee. Uh, there's a cul-de-sac down there on Middle Tree where Lee and Dasu lived. Then Joy came. Joy's a member. And then they invited Alan and Jill. And Alan and Jill would sit right over here on the right. And I could see on his face he was really into it, you know, and he was enjoying it. He kept coming, both of them. And he found out he had pancreatic cancer. And then, and we were praying about that. They found out it had metastasized. It had gone to his liver and maybe even more. He just went home. Uh, and he's going to be on outpatient uh, chemo, and uh, he's 50 years old. And uh, so it really hit me hard, you know, thinking, but what a young guy, you know. And uh, so today, if you want to go with me, I'm going to go up there at 1230. I told people in the first service, some of them are going to go. You just go right up here to Middle Tree. You go left. You go to the end of the road. That's Lee and Dasu's house. They're going to walk us. We're going to stand around the front of their house, hand in hand, and say a prayer. We're not going to go inside. We're not going to bug him, knock the door. I just thought it would be cool. He just went home for us to go, his family, his Hope family, and pray for him. If you'd like to join me, 1230. I'm going to try to get out of here at 1215. It's right up the road. I would love to have you come. If you can't come for some reason, pray for Alan anyway. See, God wants us to receive, and then he wants it to flow through us. And and I'll say this to you. uh, Sometimes, you know, you got to stay at it. 
You know, like Jacob, I love that story in the Old Testament in Genesis 32, when Jacob, he had gone through the challenge of working two years with uh, Laban, uh, and then he, he's going from that, he's dealing with problems with Esau's brother, and the whole struggle over the blessing, so he's got stuff ahead of him, he finds out Esau's coming, he's worried about that, stuff behind him, stuff ahead of him, he lays down to sleep, and then it says he wrestled with a man, but you look in the Hebrew, it's open to, what does this mean? And some say it's an angel, some say it was Christ in the flesh, we don't know, but it says he wrestled with God, and he's wrestling with God, and God says, I want you to let go, and Jacob says, no, I will not let go until I get a blessing. I love that, and he wrestles with God, and God touches his hip somehow. I don't know if he dislocated it or what to get the guy to knock it off, you know, and he, anyway, uh, God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. That's where Israel came from, wrestled with God. He wrestled, one who wrestled with God. And sometimes you need to stay in there. I think God's blessing sometimes comes the 11th hour or even later. And sometimes God wants you and I to stay at it. It's a relationship. Stay in there with him and receive that blessing. Look at this metaphor from Isaiah 66, 13. I love this metaphor. As a what? As a mother comforts her children, so I will comfort you. That's a beautiful metaphor. You know, with my dad, I don't know about some of you guys, but with my dad, if I got hurt and went, oh, dad, look, he, he's probably kind of like, yeah, that's tough. You know, he maybe rubs some dirt on it or something, you know. But if I went to my mom, she's like, oh, you got an owie. Let's watch that. And she'd just baby me, you know. God is saying, I'm like a mom. I, comfort, I will comfort you. But you and I have to come to him for that comfort. We've got to come to receive that blessing. Uh, Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. I, he says, I will give you rest for your soul. Take my yoke upon you. He wants to give you rest for your soul. If you've got a heart where you don't want to forgive, or you've been hurt, or you're angry, or you're bitter, or you're tired, or you're worn out, come to God and receive the blessing. Get it? Good. So the next blank is enjoy his presence. You know, he not, not only wants us to know him, that he's with us and for us and with us, that we can talk to him and listen to him and receive blessing. He wants us to enjoy this relationship with him. And he wants to be in our life. Um, I, uh, I asked Wayne and uh, Janice to come and share because this, look at this verse here. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. One of the things about a pastor, you get to hear a lot of awesome stories. And sometimes I want you guys to be blessed by that and hear it. And so I asked Wayne and Janice to come on up and share. Come on up, guys. Let's welcome. Give them a hope welcome as they come up. <laughs> Just stand right up here if that's all right. Is all right, Janice? Can we make it? One step at a time. Hey, Amen. One step at a time. All right. I'm going to ask you guys to hold that. You want to go first, Wayne? So uh, I want to ask you, he's talking about how God makes a difference in our life. I want to ask you, what was your life like before Christ? <laughs> was, you got to hold the mic up. I was an outlaw, a biker, a member of a gang, and uh, my mess was chaotic and out of control. And so was I. Okay. And then you, you went into prison. Uh, how long were you in prison? I was in prison for 30 years. 30 years. Three decades. Now, while you were in prison, first of all, you say you were in a gang. Where, um, I know that we, uh, we don't want to say the name of that gang, but I know it was the blood in, blood out kind of deal. And yet you had the courage to leave that. What was it that gave you the courage to leave that? No, no, it wasn't me that had any courage. It was God's courage in me. Okay. And I found out that uh, none of the, those that I listed uh, was God. And uh, I knew who God is and who will always be. And uh, he revealed himself to me. And uh, I've been a knucklehead. It hasn't uh -huh. been easy. Um, living in there for 30 years, uh, my brother, who was also um, a blood in, blood out guy, and uh, he's here today. Awesome. And uh, he delivered us. But my life continually changed. And uh, I can stand here and say that he's the Lord of my life. And thank God that he is. Amen. Awesome. 
Now, and, and also, I want to say that this beautiful lady right here has been with me every step of the way for those 30 years. Tell how you met Janice. That's what I wanted to get to next. I met Jan. Her son was in jail, and he followed me around like a puppy dog, thinking that I was somebody, and I took him to the side and told him, listen, I'm going to prison and maybe even death row for the rest of my life anyway. And if you're thinking I'm some kind of star, don't, don't go there because I'm not. You're looking at your future if you choose my path. So one thing led to another, and we've been together 33 years. And Janice, you were in, uh, uh, Janice, you were in jail ministry. You were coming to do jail ministry, right? And so you guys began communication, I, communicating. I heard her voice. Amen. All right. That is so awesome. So are you saying uh, life's a little better with Christ in, 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 in the presence of Christ in you? Uh, as we all know, being a Christian is not easy. It yeah. is not easy. It's a continual struggle, but that's how he keeps us close to him is mm -hmm. in those circumstances. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, um, I want you to know that... Um, we are your family. We thank God for bringing you here. Um, I'm excited that you both signed the membership covenant and, and made a commitment to be a part of the vision and hope. Um, and we want you to know as your family, we need you. And the church uh, said, Amen. Yeah, I, forgot, I flubbed part of that. We need you and you need us. But anyway, they, they're patient with me. Love you guys. Well, I love being loved by all of you. And I love loving you. And this is my home until the Lord takes us home for Amen. sure. Amen. Right on. Right on. God bless. Thank you. Isn't that awesome? I love how uh, in that verse it says, it says, I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence. Proverbs 8.30. And the one previously, you've made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence and eternal pleasures at your right hand. God is everywhere. He's at the prison too, and he can set some people free before they're free if they're open and they listen and they receive, and then they can, we can enjoy his presence. You know, when you have this, you have someone you love with you, you enjoy it more. You enjoy something more when you're with someone you love. Amen. And uh, I was... Uh, a uh, knucklehead two kid, and uh, um, this family took me into their home. Uh, and they're here today. My father and mother-in-law, Dale and Loretta Fleetwood, they're right back here. Yeah. And they, uh, they would take me uh, on trips. Uh, we went to Hallwood. It was awesome. Worked hard. They had a little uh, cabin up uh, in the mountains by Lake Isabella. Um, they took me in their home. They, and I still remember the first meal. Nana made this roast on a silver platter. <laughs> Man, I said, I could get used to this. And, uh, and I love them. I, I, I developed this, this love for them and wanted to be a part of their family. And they took me in, and I enjoy being with them. And yesterday, uh, when I moved here, and I found out a, a lake was so close, I, I was able to get a lake, uh, a lake. I was able to get a, a boat through uh, Tom and Deb's, Tom's brother, actually, but Deb had previously owned it, a 1975 boat. And we, the little boat, we took it out six times last year, and it ran good. And so yesterday, I wanted to take Papa and Nana out, and so uh, we're ferrying out. You got to go real slow, you know, out of the marina there at Lime Saddle. And then you get to the bridge, and you can kick it in. And I kicked it in, leveled out, started running good, you know. And so we're heading to this cove, and I looked over, and Papa is like a mechanic's mechanic. He's one of those guys that mechanics call to ask a question. I've seen that many times. And I go, she runs pretty good, doesn't she, Pop? And he goes, yep, she, she does run good. And it wasn't like 30 seconds, and it goes, brrrr. <laughs> and it, I could keep it going, but I had to just, you know, turn around and get back in there uh, as quick as I can. And so we finally get it in there, and then uh, it's real hot, and they had to wait forever. And we get them, I finally get the boat land. We're in the truck, and uh, I'm, I'm thinking driving home. It's hot. My, my air conditioner doesn't work. I have 250, two windows down, 50 miles an hour. And, and, and I look at these people, and I think, I love these people, you know. Even when you go through a hard time, 
Uh, it's, okay. it's better when you're with someone you love. You know what I mean? When I was in Portland, the church there, God blessed it to grow pretty good. And so when you grow, sometimes people start calling you to ask you about how it grew. So I started traveling quite a bit. And every month, a couple Sundays, and uh, I thought, oh, this would be exciting because I'd never traveled all that much. But what I found was I was always thinking, I wish Tracy was there. Oh, Tracy would love this. Oh, I wish Tracy was there. And uh, so it's like, bummer, I wonder, we'd call, and I'd say, I wish you were here, you wouldn't believe this or that. And so uh, sometimes they would put me up in a nice hotel, and, and, and I was wishing she was there, you know, and I, because like when we travel, a lot of times we weren't able to get the real nice hotel, you're with me, you know. We're at that one where they keep the light on, and uh, so, um, so uh, sometimes some guys would travel with me. There's a guy named Jim that was in ministry. Minister Jim would go, or Deacon Dave. He was a dentist that worked with me and uh, doing the small group ministry. Sometimes Deacon Dave would go with me or Jim. But, you know, when you're in a nice hotel, can you understand that being with Deacon Dave or Minister uh, Jim is not quite the same as if Tracy was there. Are you with me on that? You know, it's like I may have had more than four kids if she could have made some of those trips, but I digress. Um, so uh, what I'm trying to get at, uh, well, let me tell you this story. We went up to Canada. She finally got to go on one. And uh, I found, I did some research, because I knew they were going to give me an honorarium, so I thought, well, we'll stay with the, the believers there that are bringing us, and they were going to fly us higher up than Edmonton to speak at this church plant, and uh, fly us back down to Edmonton, and then we would fly out the next day. So I thought, well, we'll stay with the people bringing us up, the believers, on the way up, on the way down, I'll get our own place, get a nice hotel, because I wanted her to experience that too, and I found out there's like this huge mall there, one of the biggest around in the world, and so it had like a water park inside the mall, and she blew my mind. She was going on the highest slides. I thought I was Mr. Radical. She was like scaring me to death on some of those slides and everything. And then they had a hotel, and it was called Fantasyland. And uh, the, there's this old elder. I love him, and he's got a sense of humor, and he's got this accent, and, and I didn't tell him where we were staying. So, you know what? We don't want to be a burden. We're just going to go out and spend the night at a hotel, and then we'll get a, a taxi or whatever. We'll get to the uh, hotel. We may arrange one of the, the believers to come. I can't remember. But anyway, he calls me and he goes, uh, Brother Stan, where'd you stay last night? And I go, oh, we, we just stayed at this hotel, kind of down there by the mall. And he goes, Fantasyland? <laughs> Did you stay at Fantasyland, Brother Stan? And I got busted. I got caught. But we had so much fun. <laughs> you enjoy something more when you're with someone you love. Why am I saying this? If God is with me, and, and God is in me, I can enjoy God all the time, listening to him, talking to him, receiving blessings. I can enjoy his presence. Wow, God, what a beautiful morning. Wow, God, look at these trees. You did a good job on these trees. I love the trees on the ridge. Wow, look at that canyon. Wow, thanks for that conversation I just had with those people. Wow, Lord, thank you for the band practice. It's so awesome to have a band that likes each other and even our practice nights. You just have fun. You're driving home going, wow, thanks, God. Wow, thanks for the board meeting. It wasn't a boring board meeting. It was, they, they love me and I love them and we had a great time. God, thanks for that conversation when I had. God, thanks for that family time. Wow, look at that sunset. Good job, Dad. Good job on that, Father. See, that's what it's like to live in the presence of God. It's ongoing. It's a, not a religion. Get a little segment or compartmentalize. It's not a religion or a Sunday. It's a walk with God. Look at uh, Proverbs 8. Solomon says, I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing when? Always in his presence. See, if, if we can have a moment with God, that means we can have a minute with God. If we can have a minute with God, that means we can have an hour with God. If we can have an hour with God, that means we can have a day with God. If we can have a day with God, we can have a year with God. If we can have a year with God, we can have a life with God. And that's what he's after. God is with you. Believe it like a kid, trusting innocently, trusting in your God, your father who's crazy about you. Maybe right now you need to talk to God. In your heart, you need to listen to him. Maybe there's something you're holding on to that's hurting you. Maybe you're bitter, you're angry, you're not forgiving someone, you don't want to let go of that. They deserve it, right? I love what Tom said a couple weeks ago about, says honor your father, your mother. It doesn't say if they're really good, you know, or uh, you don't have to if they sucked at it. it says love. 
And part of that is because for us, we need to forgive, we need to love. Uh, if, you're, if you're having trouble forgetting yourself, you need, forgiving yourself, you need to listen to God. If you're tired, come to Jesus. He said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you. And he says, I will give you rest. You can have soul rest today if you come to Jesus. If you let go of whatever it is, anything in your heart today, like a little child trusting, you can be free and I can be free. And that's good news. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you that you're with us. You're not only for us as we saw last week, but in scripture we saw today, you are with us. And that makes all the difference, God. And I pray for anyone here that's struggling, God, maybe they haven't heard your voice for a while and they need to hear from you. Uh, speak to their heart, Lord. Uh, make yourself known to them, please, God. Um, Father, I pray for anyone here who has something they need to let go of, that today's the day that they will let go of whatever it is for their own good regardless uh, of any difficulty. If there's someone that has been mean to them or they're having a hard time with, help them to take them to the cross, Lord. Help us to take them to the cross and leave them there because you can handle it better than we can and we need to be free. Father, I thank you that we can talk with you anytime, that we can listen to you anytime, that we can receive blessings from you all the time and we can always enjoy your presence. We commit to that in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Hope, let's stand. Oh, I can't believe what you said. Oh, I can't believe what he did. Oh, don't they know what's wrong? Don't they know what's wrong? Yeah. Maybe it's something I missed. But how could they treat me? Disregard. This is love. This is hate. We have a choice to make. Oh, Father, I never want you forgiven. And they don't know what they've been doing. Give me grace to forgive them I feel like the one who is There's only the dead that can live Seventy times, seven times Lord, it doesn't feel right for me to turn a blind eye, though I guess it's not that long. The way you think you've died. This is love. This is hate. We all have a choice to make it. Oh, Father, won't you forgive? They don't know what they've been doing Oh, Father, give me grace to forgive them Cause I feel like the one who's in No, no Why do we think that hate's gonna change their heart? We're up in arms over wars, don't need to be fought Tribe won't let us lay our weapons on the ground We build our bridges up, but just to burn them down Hey, we think pain's owed apologies and then it'll stop But truth be told, it doesn't matter if they're sorry or not Freedom comes when we surrender to the sound of mercy, mercy and your grace Father, send your angels down, say it no. Father, won't you forgive them? Cause they don't know what they've been doing No, no to forgive them Cause I feel like the one losing Yeah, I feel like I've been losing Oh, Father Give me grace to forgive them Cause I feel like the one losing I feel like I've been losing Oh, 
Father, give me grace to forgive me Cause I feel like the one losing there. Awesome. So I'm going to head down there at 1230 up at, actually up there at Allen's. If you'd like to join me there, just go right up Pence and then turn left on Middle Tree. You'll catch on in the name of the street after a minute because there's a big tree in the middle of the road. So anyway, um, Lee and Dasu is going to be there at the end of the road to help take us around the front of their house and we're going to pray. Uh, but for right now, it's time to pray for our offering. I was kind of lame. Right now we're going to pray for our offering. Yeah! All right, there we go. There we go. Let's pray. Father, we want to be cheerful givers. Father, if there's anyone here that's not prospering, as the New Testament uh, says, give as you prosper, help them not to feel guilty about that or worried about that. If there's someone that's just new here and not even sure about all this, help them to realize this service is our gift to them. But for those of us that are members or committed to the vision of Hope God and that are prospering, I pray we'll, we'll give uh, cheerfully. God, we want to be a force of hope here on the ridge and beyond until Jesus comes, and we pray in his name. Amen. Amen. Hey, before we give, what is our purpose? Building, Building relationships that last forever. How do you do that? Love, love God, God, love people. people. So remember, till next week, in Christ, we always have hope. Thanks for being here, everybody.
got roaring like a lion, God's not dead. You surely you love this feeling on the inside, roaring like a lion, God's not dead. You surely you love this feeling on the inside, roaring like a lion, God's not dead. You surely you love this feeling on the inside, roaring like a lion. Have a great day.